Hello everyone, and welcome to the Trebum mutation tier list for the Eternal Cylinder. Okay, first off, I'm going to start off with the body mutations, and we'll go from there. But we are going in the random order I decide on. First up, we have the wheel body mutation. This is one of the best mutations in the game because you can kill almost anything as long as you can roll into it safely. Wheel body also protects you from certain predators such as the Vushlop and Gargadin and can also break any hard shell item to get the soft core inside. However, I must put it in A tier because this mutation does have a major weakness. The wheel body makes you roll slower so you have to put yourself in danger in order to deal damage and if you ever need to roll from the cylinder, you never want the wheel body Trebum to be the leader. Now for the storage body, I will put this in S tier because it provides so much value throughout the entire game. Having that extra inventory really helps you be prepared for anything, and the more Trebum you have, the bigger your inventory gets. So with the storage body, you are never in a bad situation. The Mixer Body also belongs in S tier because of how much power it gives you. The Mixer Body allows you to take down any enemy that you want to by making big energy bombs. Sure, the other bombs can be helpful too, but those energy bombs are the best. The Cuboid Body gives Trebum a funny square look, but it is only used for solving Trebum Shrine puzzles. So I will put it in C tier due to its specific use in the game, and it makes the Trebum look like a cube. The Mineral Processor is extremely helpful throughout the entire game for getting upgrades in the Trebum Shrine. Using it, you can process any minerals you come across to get a bunch of currency to get upgrades. But the Mineral Processor mutation is not necessary for survival, so I will put it in A tier. The Water Processor is another helpful mutation. With it, your Trebum will never go thirsty again. And if you have this mutation, you can practically ignore your water storage for the entire game. You just have to make sure that this Trebum always has Stuff to be turning into water. So I will also put this one in A tier. The amphibian body makes traveling in the water a breeze, especially if you have the webbed feet mutation to pair with it. But due to how little you actually need to swim long distances, because water isn't really a major factor throughout the entire game, I will put it in B tier. You know, it's very useful, but you don't really need to use it that much. As for the inflatable body, this provides a lot of utility. It can allow you to climb steep cliffs easier, especially when paired with leaping legs. Another Another cool thing about the inflatable body is being able to go over the cylinder by using geysers, which allows you to farm liberators for their amber items to protect mutations. You can also go high in the sky if you pair this with the tornado trunk. So I will put this in S tier for all that utility it gives you of exploration, being able to reach high places, and being able to farm those liberators by getting over the cylinder. The regenerative body looks cool, but I haven't found its effect to be that powerful. Sure, it regens health a bit faster, but if you need health, it's better to go for the plated body. So I will put this in C tier. And since I was just talking about it, the plated body mutation. This is an amazing defensive mutation that gives you a ton of extra health because it doubles your health. So if you have max health upgrade from the Trebum Shrines and then put on Plated Body, you are going to be basically unkillable unless you do something really stupid. So this makes it a great defensive mutation to use in any battle. However, it is weak to heat, so if you ever come across any hot areas or the hot barrier, you do lose health quite quickly. So I'm going to put it in A tier because of the weakness. The unstable body is surprisingly useful for a joke mutation, as this explosion packs quite the punch. The unstable body is more powerful than a big energy bomb because it only takes four unstable bodies to kill a liberator versus the eight big energy bombs it takes to kill it. Because of the sheer power the unstable body can give you, I will put it in S tier. And you can use it quite safely most of the time, as long as you look at that timer and then plan perfectly when you come into contact with the enemy. As for the Master of Song here and the Trawala body, these two are only for story purposes and they don't 
do any utility. They just look cool. So we're gonna put them in D tier. Now for the skin mutations. The luminescent skin can light up the dark. However, there is only one pitch black place in the game, so it isn't useful for a majority of the game. So I'm gonna put it in C tier. The iridescent skin is an amazing visual mutation that can make any trebum look sparkly and beautiful. Some players also claim it offers some protection against the yellow light, but I haven't seen anything confirming this. I'm gonna put the iridescent skin in B tier because it lets you do so much customization with your trebum's looks, and it's just amazing. The aposematic skin provides protection against a few predators that eat their prey whole, including the deadly Zushgarg. However, given that there really isn't a lot of creatures that try to eat you whole, I'll put it in B tier, because it's useful, but it's not super useful. The Entomophilus skin gives Trebum a nice hairdo, but provides little value throughout the game. Its only use is to farm a bunch of sack flies so you can use them as health potions, and you can only find sack flies near the water, so if you're in an area that doesn't have any water sources, then you won't find any sack flies. So for those reasons, I will put it in B tier. The furred skin gives Trebum protection from the cold, but it's only useful in the tundra, so it's gonna go in C tier. At least it gives your Trebum a nice fur coat. The electrogenic skin is incredibly useful for Trebum that have a death wish, as reviving Trebum, especially with many mutations, can be very costly. The only limitation to electrogenic skin is that Trebum that get eaten whole can't be revived, and there is a small cooldown between each revive. If you lose a bunch of Trebum at once, it's not really going to help you if you only have it on one Trebum. So I'm going to be placing it in A tier. The crystalline skin mutation is used to progress the story, but also provides some protection from the elements, and gives Trebum a unique look. Some Trebum can even change colors completely when they get the crystalline skin mutation, so I will put this in C tier. The camouflage skin is amazing for laying low as you run around, and I use it quite often myself to avoid those annoying enemies that just keep chasing you when they see you. The only downside of the camouflage skin is that if you get too close to an enemy, they will see you, which is why I'm going to put it in A tier instead of S. The hardened skin mutation is only useful for protecting Trebum from the heat, although it also gives Trebum a unique look, and it can change some Trebum colors when the mutation is applied. So I will put it in C tier. The odorous skin mutation scares away Onogrosh, but considering that you don't get it until the desert, and there are no triple bosh or Onogrosh in the last biome, the actual usefulness of odorous skin is very limited, so it will also be in C tier. Next, I will go over the eye mutations. The third eye allows you to track anything you could need from your compendium. While incredibly helpful, it is not OP because you do have to be near these items for it to find it. It doesn't have infinite range or anything like that, so I will put it in A tier. The extendable eyes are also incredibly helpful because you can scan your surroundings and get a very great bird's eye view with them. So I'm also going to put these in A tier for their usefulness in seeing threats ahead or finding objectives you need to get to. The perceptive eyes are helpful in finding valuable items such as purple corn, which gives the most food out of any other food item, and it can also help to find secret areas where there are unique items or minerals. But the best part of this mutation is having glowing eyes. So it goes in A tier as well. The analytical eyes look very weird and it can scan creatures to fill up your creature compendium. But this provides no real use because its only purpose is to teach you some things about the game. So it's going in D tier. The iconic vision looks amazing, but it is only useful for one specific Trebum puzzle and nowhere else. So it's going in C tier, and the only thing that puts it in C tier is the additional visual effect. And Impaired Eyes is truly a negative mutation, completely useless and goes in D tier. Next up are the Trunk Mutations. The Dimatic Trunk allows Trebum to scare small or medium-sized creatures to protect themselves. But you can outroll everything that gets scared by the Dimatic Trunk, so it really has little use. So I will put it in C tier. The Filter Trunk is useful for any areas that have toxic gas, or if there's creatures that are spewing out toxic gas, the Filter Trunk will protect you from the toxic gas. But remember, it doesn't work on Trebum gas bombs, so make sure not to die. It is definitely a nice mutation to have, so I will put it in B tier because it is useful for those events where you have to go through toxic gas, but you're not always dealing with toxic gas. 
The Toxic Trunk is a useful weapon against many enemies, but it's not useful against large enemies such as the Tongo Grop or Cleansers. It is still a strong mutation, however, using it will drain your water supply, so it is easy to dehydrate yourself if you're not paying attention, which is why I put it in A tier instead of S. It is just limited by your water supply. The Host Trunk mutation is nice for getting objects that are very far away from you or in hard to reach places, such as minerals that are on the tops of caves or fruit in the fir trees you find in the desert. So I put it in B tier for that additional range. The Tornado Trunk doesn't do much, but it can be used with the inflatable body to go high in the sky. Quick edit here, guys. The devs patched being able to use the inflatable body and the Tornado Trunk at the same time. So you can no longer use the Tornado Trunk to go high up in the sky. So with this new information, I would put Tornado Trunk in D tier because other than that, its only usefulness is for getting the hat mushrooms on top of fir trees. The pyrogenic trunk has some unique utility. It allows you to hatch trebum eggs instantly, which is a huge benefit, and it provides warmth if needed. But it cannot be really used offensively because it just does too little damage to a small area. So I will put it in B tier. The extractive trunk is useful for extracting extra water from anything you eat that gives you water. However, you have to make sure that you are the leader when you're eating these water items in order to benefit from the effect. But another downside is that why would you use the extractive trunk if you have the water processor body? Like for water, you would always use the water processor body. You wouldn't really need to use the extractive trunk unless you have no other choice. So I'm going to put it in C tier. The rattle trunk is just like the dimatic trunk and it scares all the same things the dimatic trunk does, so it's going in C tier as well. The fumogenic trunk is a very powerful mutation because you can create an instant hiding spot with it. This hiding spot also protects you from the yellow light of eternal cylinder agents, allowing you to protect your mutations. And even if a creature sees you when you put down the blue smoke, they will instantly lose you when you put down the smoke. However, they can still run through the smoke cloud, so still be careful about that one. Because of this powerful ability, I will put it in S tier. Because what's more powerful than being able to instantly hide from your enemies? The tongued trunk looks cool and can do damage or interact with items that are on the sides of trees or walls so that the item falls, but the aiming of the tongued trunk is terrible and actually dealing damage or trying to hit an item is pretty hard to do because you have to position yourself perfectly. So I'm going to put it in D tier. If you want to deal damage to things, use the toxic trunk, not this one. The irascible trunk is completely useless and just fills your headphones or speakers with garbly gook for 5 minutes so that goes in D tier. And the Trawalla trunk looks cool, but has no function except for the storyline, so that goes in D tier as well. As for the Hypnotic trunk, this one has a really valuable use. If you pair the Hypnotic trunk with the real body mutation, you can easily lure a bunch of Glickbo to you so that you can kill them and then use them to make big energy bombs. So because of that powerful combination, and plus being able to attract Lickbull allows you to use them as bait for other predators if needed, I will put it in B tier. Now for the leg slash feet mutations. Leaping legs are definitely an incredibly useful mutation that can allow you to easily climb up steep slopes or canyons. Being able to travel the land easily is very important, so I will put it in A tier. Webbed feet greatly helps with swim speed and pairs perfectly with the amphibian body, but it is also only useful in water, and as I said with the amphibian body, it's not a huge part of the game to be swimming through water, so I will put it in B tier. The quadruped legs allow for faster run speed, which is very useful when you run out of stamina or you're trying to conserve your stamina and you're just casually exploring an area. So I will put this one in A tier because it's such a quality of life increase to just have have that extra movement speed, but you don't have to roll. The sucker feet have very limited uses throughout the game, and it really isn't needed past the tundra, so this one goes in C tier. 
The meteor feat is more useful than it first appears. The ground stomp can deal damage to anything nearby, allowing you to kill less deadly enemies such as the witness and treg rum. This ground stomp can also knock down all items on nearby cliff sides or objects such as minerals in a cave, plants, and more, which makes obtaining those items way easier to get. And the meteor feet allow you to jump higher so you can get around easier. So this is definitely an S tier mutation because of how much utility it has. The stealth legs give Trebum weird legs that look kind of bug-like, and the mutation description says they make less noise when running around, but it is much better to have quadruped legs instead of these legs. You know, most predators don't really find you based off sound, so I'm not sure what the real benefit of these legs are other than just making your Trebum look really weird. And if you want to be stealthy, just put on the camouflage skin. Like, that's way better. So this one goes in D tier. The Trawalla legs are purely cosmetic and only for the story, so they'll go in D tier as well. And the legless mutation takes away your legs, but you can still roll around. However, it's still a completely useless mutation. So that will go in D tier as well. Give me your thoughts below. What do you think of this tier list? What would you put where and why? I would love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.